Having set up the payroll and the payroll categories with which we're going to pay the people, we now need to enter the people into the card file. If I click on card file, it'll bring up the card file command center. I click on cards list. My employees are empty and I'm now going to click on new to enter the first person. This is where I start to fill in the details of who they are. Okay, having filled in the details for his profile, I can move on to the card details. And this enables me to put in a link to a picture of what Harry looks like. I also can place some notes in there. But a word of caution, these notes may appear on a pay advice. I also have at the bottom some identifiers, custom lists and custom fields. I might want to, for example, have a list of the types of motor vehicles that they are entitled to drive, and I might have a custom list set up saying what type of licenses they've got, whether it be motorcycle, private car, large vehicles, semi-rigids. And in custom field number one, I might then want to put in the actual driver's license number that they've got, so that I have a record on file of their uh, important additional information. How you use these, I will leave to your imagination. The next part I will move on to is the payroll details. If I click on payroll details, I can now start filling in all the personal details and the other things to get them paid. On the first part of their personal details, I need to put in their date of birth. It will also calculate their age for me, their gender, the day they started, and eventually their termination date. I also put in the basis on which they're employed, their employment category, their employment status, and I also have, if I wish, to put in an employment classification. I also determine here how they're going to have their pay slips given to them. Am I going to print them and send them out, or will I just email them? And if I email them, I'll also have to put in their payslip email. When I've completed, the screen will look something like this. When it comes to the employment basis, we have a choice of individual, labour hire or other. Most workers will be individual, but occasionally we may just have people there that are just purely labour hire. We'll stick with individual. The employment category, are they permanent or are they temporary? If they're permanent, that's good. If they're temporary, that's also good. And are they full-time, part-time, other or casual? Depending upon the status of your workforce is how you tick them. Employment classifications, if you have members of unions working for you or particular grades or whatever, you can actually set up your own employment classifications. The ones provided by MYOB, if I click on the larger arrow, appear to be for construction workers at various levels. If you wish to use these, you may like to add your own. The payslip delivery method, do I want to print them or do I want to email them? If I decide that I want them emailed, it will also default with the email address that was written on the front in the profile. If they want a separate email address for their payslips, as some people might, then you can override that at this stage. Having done that, we'll now move on to the wages. We now need to set up the actual wages that Harry will be paid. If I click on the wages icon, it'll bring out some fairly questions that it needs me to answer. For example, what pay basis is he on? We're going to pay Harry on an hourly basis, so we'll click hourly, and it switches from an annual salary to an hourly rate. We're going to pay Harry an hourly rate of $30 per hour. Enter 30. How often does he get paid? We have a choice of weekly, fortnightly, twice a month, or monthly. 
Harry is going to get paid weekly. The hours in the weekly pay period are 38. That was the standard we set up in the payroll setup at the beginning. The wages expense account, it defaults to 65130, which is wages and salaries. But if your accounting requires wages to be allocated, maybe some people to the manufacturing side of your business, some people to the sales and admin side, some people to management. You could have three or four different wages and salaries accounts. You can actually override the default to whichever one you need to do. We also need to set up the actual categories that Harry will be paid. He will be paid every week a base hourly. He may occasionally get a bonus, we'll tick that. He might even get a commission occasionally. He'll probably go on holiday. Do you pay holiday leave loading? If you do, tick holiday leave loading. He also may get overtime, not necessarily every week, but maybe on an odd basis. He probably will take sick pay, we'll click that. He doesn't get the travel allowance, and he hasn't got any unused holiday pay or unused long service leave, not until he gives in his notice. We'll now move on to setting up the superannuation.